Okay, it's 3 p.m., but I think we can wait a couple of minutes because to wait some someone to join. So many people attending. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got up, I went to get coffee, I went in the rain for you guys, just think about it. Uh, what time is what? there, Michael? 8, 8 a.m. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> well, I drove people to work and school because it's like, you know, it's just a skating rink. It's not a good skating rink. Just frozen slush. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining. Okay. Do you know if Pascal will join? I know of nobody's intentions. Okay. So I don't know. Okay, thank you. I know that Aris and Corrad cannot join because they have another meetings. So, yeah. Well, then it can be a quick meeting. Yeah. I'll ping Pascal uh, okay. SMS Thank you. just to know. Thank you. So which is a procedure if nobody joins? So we just uh, go through the slides because it's going to be recorded so people can watch it later or we just reschedule? I think we should be rescheduling. Okay. I don't think there's any point in going through the slides that you've you guys have written in, I don't know if I read, but probably. Okay. Yeah, there will be a doodle for next interim in February. So you can just jump there.
I'm surprised John is not joining. Is he ignoring us altogether? Okay. Be aware well, the meeting is recorded. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no problem. I think we can wait until 3.10 and then we start the meeting. We wait 10 minutes. Right? Yeah, another five minutes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Hello, Pascal. Hi, Pascal. Can you hear us? Hello, Dominique. Hey, good to hear you. So I think we can get started, and that's going to be a quick meeting. Just run through the slides. OK, great. <laughs> Um, thank you for joining. Uh, welcome to the ITF for interim. Uh, please understand that this. Yeah, you meeting... can make it simple. Just skip yeah. through all that. We all know that. Before. Okay. <laughs> we just align this meeting is aligned to the not well. We will not read it, but please uh, be aware of that. Okay, you are aware of uh, how we have to treat with respect and uh, how's the the rules are specified okay the the these are the materials but uh, you already know that so this is the agenda we go to the introduction then the projections uh, then rfd mopex enrollment priority and nsa extension a comments on the agenda no okay so uh, the draft status, so how the paper was submitted to the ISG and uh, waiting for um, comments. DAO projection as well was submitted to the ISG and the version 34 should address all the issues of the routing directorate. Um, NSA extension uh, is submitted to the ISG, but uh, was um, some comments addressed, but still some open issues are uh, there. It was returned to the working group. Um, then, enrollment priority, all the issues since um, be addressed, so it's ready to go forward. MOPEX is in progress addressing open issues. NFT as well, uh, we have uh, reviews that need to be addressed. Uh, the waiting for attention, from capabilities, and uh, storing root at knowledge. Then the milestones were changed as uh, suggested in the previous ITF. Uh, okay, we will not go into details on this. Mm, then the open issues for MOPEX, we have two tickets. For uh, RNFD, we have four tickets, basically on, based on the reviews. And for NSA extension, it should be not number one, should be number 28 that it was reopened today. 
Then uh, we suggest to have regular meetings every two months. Since today is very low participation, well, we propose as well to have uh, next interim meeting in February. There is a doodle that we will share after the meeting to the mailing list so we can have more quorum. And uh, we were discussing about the ITF in Brisbane, but it seems that uh, we will not have ITF meeting in Brisbane. Do you have some comments on it? I don't know that I'll be there. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'm happy not to do that. Okay. Thank you. The, I think that the yeah. trade off is if we have a meeting in a different time, time zone, we could attract new members, uh, specifically from the Asian Pacific region. But if nobody else is there, um, it will not be very attractive anyway. So. I think they... we, we could have a virtual interim in a different time zone. <clears throat> yep, that could work. Yeah. Thank you for the comments. Then uh, the interim in April will depend on the dates choose on February. Then, well, the RATA was uh, verified. This is a correct uh, point to notice that uh, the artifact, the Rank information at the RPI uh, will be typically be non-zero when it arrives to the dollar root. So this is correct. Then the, Dominic, you created the two errata for this, yeah. uh, Mr. Hoff. Yes. Yeah, I read Mr. Hoff again as part of the NSA draft, uh, mm -hmm. NSA extension draft oh. review, and so one error. Rata is just purely editorial, a misspelling. The other one is, this one, I think, is uh, just a, a, f a few words that were got forgotten in the sentence. So to me, it's editorial. But the um, RFC editor wasn't too sure, so they referred it to John. And I think John is going to come back to us sometime. Um, but you know, if you want to discuss about it, we can discuss it later, maybe in the any other business or on the mailing list. I'd rather not be talking too long because I'm not in a convenient place to, to be talking. Sure. Great, then for this errata as well, it's just a typo. Then for a DAO projection, well, it is submitted to the IC as we previously mentioned, the Version 34 should address the issues and comments of the routing directory review. We have not seen any replay of the mailing list. Did you got something, Pascal, from Susan from November? Well, uh, no, I, um, th there was this meeting, I think it was interim, where Susan Su Suarez, she came and she said she would address my, my responses, my replies. And I've not seen anything. So if there was a, a way to Maybe uh, just ping her and say, you know, where are you? Okay, I will ping her. My remembrance of that meeting is that she said she stands by her comment, and then, but but we're free to um, do differently. She she had a comment. She made her point, and I don't remember that she, there was something more than we were expecting from her. Am I mistaken? Well, uh, and John, you're but, correct. Right. You're correct. We, uh, she said things. I answered my point of view, and and for some reason, for some of the questions, it was like uh, just as you say. I mean, she thinks what she thinks, and I think what I think. And in particular, one of those issues was, should it be experimental? And I said mm -hmm. no because we tried experimental for uh, the first uh, P2P draft, and that means nobody will look at it. Uh, so that's not what we want. And, and will never work probably on a DAO projection piece, which would not be experimental anyway. Uh, so either we publish it or we don't, but I don't think experimental helps at all. Um, now in our environment, like BAS or things like that, experimental has a much different meaning, but, but in role, I mean, the experience we have on experimental is that it means nobody looks at it. Um, so, so that was for the experimental thing. But then there were another uh, set of questions and, and answers in my uh, replies, and I did some fixes. And I, 
I think she kind of said she was okay with the changes, but I've, I don't think I've seen an email saying okay uh, on the changes. So, so uh, I think we need to to agree or disagree as a group on either our point of view or my point of view on the experimental, and then for the other subjects, I mean, I'd appreciate to see if she's okay with with the document. I think she mostly was, but that, that's why I am. I'm not 100% yeah. sure everything is okay beside this experimental story. Yeah, you, you're doing the version 34 and clarification on implicit ta targets, but I have not seen from your email from November a reply from her. So we can pin her anyway, and let's see if she's agreed with version 34, which I, like Dominic say, I think she she was okay, but we will can confirm that for the version 34. Yes, and for experimental, she kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, she she mm -hmm. lets the group decide. So as a group, I mean, what do we do? And she yeah. has a point. I have my point, and now you all, as a group, we need to decide. I think on this one is clear. John said it's okay with me to be standard strike, so yeah. nothing to do. And but you're saying there were other uh, points, uh, other comments that you responded to. So who is willing to take the action point to double check on that? I I can I can be here. Good, thank so you. So can replay the email. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. And then for past border of trust detection in repo, we have uh, got so far four reviews from Anand, Carms, Security and Routing Directorate review, and those reviews are being addressing, addressed. So the summary of the Anand review, many thanks, Anand, for your review, extensive review. Uh, he comments on the large scale border route the, the play, deployments and uh, how will be the failure detection as well if he can, the if Conrad can provide some experimental result, results specified in energy, energy consumption plan, which is the impact of different type of networks and as well he provides some other tech, uh, suggests some other techniques like overhearing it can be used, uh, detecting border road failure, um, and then as well some comments on provide some reference algorithm with uh, when the, the stage change just to minimize the force positive and negative, um, as well some question on the threshold values how how is it up. Then, uh, as well, we got the cards review, many things cards. Uh, basically, as well, uh, to introduce some clarifications, um, explain some concept, uh, explain as well some rationally about some uh, sentence in the text and some typos. As well, we got the review from the security directorate, which uh, define as ready with uh, some minor needs. And then the routing directorate by Victoria, well, as well, she proposed to have some uh, further explanation and in in, in its clarity. Um, what happened with the all nodes can participate in the algorithm, um, such as as well some uh, reflection of description for negative or positive uh, CR, CRRC, conflict-free replicable counter, as well, uh, request more clarification on the rationally behind to use prime numbers and, uh, and the process of selecting bits. And then as well, more clarifications about the total responsibilities when they have to choose the bits and some kind of uh, bit numbers. And reorganizing some text. Um, yeah, so since all these, uh, Reviews are and so in, in those yes. in all these points, do you think I haven't taken the time to go through each of them and check? Is there anything, uh, any hard point, any anything difficult that we need a discussion on, a technical discussion? I mean, or is is this mostly editorial? Do you think we need work on specific uh, work on that? I think Anand and Victoria made some points 
that uh, sometimes I think uh, the opinion um, of Horat, for example, if what we use, what we don't use overhearing, uh, and then, for example, compare with the, the method of uh, border root failure detection with FIT IoT Lab, how they use it. So I would like to have the opinion of uh, um, Conrad on that, and as well, for example, when they have to use the threshold, why we use this method or provide more uh, in, um, content. Some kind of content is not very good to uh, clarify, but I think um, there is no important big issues. It's more clarification why he used what he used, um, but basically on that. I don't see bigger like uh, issues. And I'm just uh, want to know why he's using the method that he's using and not another ones. Basically on that and some kind of uh, clarification from some concept. Yeah, basically, uh, basically it's like that. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so next step after addressing the issues will be issue the working group last call to the shepherd. Michael, you are the shepherd. <laughs> uh, just to let you know that the work is in progress. Um, we hope to have some uh, advance on February, but let's see. I hope we can present in the next interim meeting. Um, then for MOPEX, how many? Yep. Um, so last time I, I discussed um, the idea of re, um, you know being more accurate in our description on reusing the old values for the new OPEX field. I think we agreed on what to do. Um, and so my main question is, uh, who's taking the action point to implement the change? And well, uh, I'm willing to contribute to the, the text of the document if that helps. Uh, otherwise, is there an intention among the current office to actually implement that? Okay, thank you very much. And then, well, since we uh, have the offers within the meeting, I think Pascal, Michael, and Raul are the three current offers. So, would that help if I contribute some text to that? Or do you handle that? I, mean, I, I would be delighted that you do, to be honest, because you seem to be clear on what the changes is. What changes are. I don't remember exactly what the consensus was personally. Um, okay, so, so since this is fresh yeah, in my yeah. memory, I can just <laughs> do it <laughs> rather than hit somebody on in his head to have it done. Okay. I'll contribute text to the to the GitHub. Thank you very much, Dominic. Um then for a network enrollment in Ripple Networks. Um, all the issues were closed. The last issue was closed in November, related with the Mantisa, changed from 12 bits to 4 bits. So we think that is ready for publications. And then the, the next steps will be assigned to internal reviewers. We have already assigned the routine and security directory reviews. We hope to have it early February. And then after that, we go to working group last call, Shepard, and some other additional comments, suggestions. So I think from last time I had an, an action item to check something with trickle and since again I haven't taken the time to do that work I'm still willing to do that so I've uh, reread the the draft and I want to reread 6550 as well to check on the trickle reset conditions and I think the question was uh, do we need to specify a new reason for resetting the trickle timer, or does that fit into the current existing conditions for trickle timer reset? But again, I'm not too clear exactly, so I need to go back. So you're saying that maybe the document has to update 6550's trickle reset criteria. Is that what you're saying? That's a general uh, question, yes. Okay. Which I'm not totally clear on. 
Okay, we can create the ticket on that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, then for NSAA. Okay, so my time to talk. Sorry, it's pretty loud here. I'll try to make it short. Um, so last time we had this discussion on uh, mass, max path cost and um, Pascal rightly mentioned that this was a notion introduced in Mr. Hoff, the max path cost variable. And um, and so I went back and looked and, and so we want to set the cost to max path cost. Ines, can you mute please? You're breathing into the mic and it's pretty loud on my side as well. So let's even on noise. Uh, thank you. Um, and so we have two avenues for thought. One is, uh, uh, you know, is setting the cost to max path cost uh, enough to mandate that the neighbor will not be chosen as a parent. And so I went back to Mr. Hoff, RFC 6719. And interestingly, I noticed that there's no normative language that says specifically that when max path cost, when cost is equal to max path cost, the neighbor shall not be used. So I think I've uncovered a little problem with uh, RFC 6719. However, the text uh, informally hints at, you know, if you set it to that value, it will prevent it from being used, which is nice. We get the idea, but the text is not normative. Uh, so that's one little issue for 6719. And then the other idea was that we could uh, make NSA extension independent of 6719 anyway. So we don't have to deal with that problem by removing the reference to uh, max path cost and make it a, a supplement to an objective function that limits the selection of uh, neighbors as uh, um, parents. And Aris had uh, accepted the suggestion by Pascal to uh, propose a new text in GitHub in a separate branch uh, to try to formulate an NSA extension without reference to Mr. Hoff. And so we pinged him a few days ago and he said he didn't have time to work on that yet, but he promises he will do that by next week. And so far, he has been diligent in delivering his, on his promises. So I, I trust that it will appear. Uh, so let's, I suggest we just wait for a few days, see what he produces, and then we have something to discuss. That's my report on this. Any comments? OK, great. Thank you very much, Dominique. Um, no further comments or questions? Okay. Um, okay. Open floor. So basically, we will go through. We will share a doodle for the next inter meeting. And do you have some additional comments? Well, I think um, Michael made a suggestion. You know, there's so little energy in the group. What do we do? So I think in general, I agree with Michael. We need to. Uh, focus on what we really want to deliver, uh, what are the most important points, and, and be really focused on moving the documents through the door, the, the few ones that we think we can handle, um, and then decide what we do with the group in general. Okay, yeah, sure. So again, as I said, I can spend time within the next few months working on raw then for the whole summer i'll be uh, unavailable and and so we're considering replacement as a chair position we have a potential candidate interviewing probably last week for the position and uh, well yeah from my point of view again we need to focus on what we really want to accomplish within the next few months Okay, that sounds good. And I can't thank you enough, uh, Dominique, for all the work that you've done for this working group. So 
Deep thanks. Yeah, sure. thank you. I hope you enjoy your tour in, in summer. I think he's going sailing. This is recorded. That. Yes. Anyway, okay. Uh, it sounds good to me. I, I would say, you know, maybe we can just finish before your time is up and that would be enough. Um, and then maybe, you know, the IESG process might take longer for some of the documents, but we don't have to be working. We don't have to be meeting. We just need uh, someone to push buttons. Right. And talking about the IESG and the process for publication, uh, I don't know if we can do anything to expedite the, the process. In this, uh, I mean, like Charlie, send, send the other... send the aid, send the ads good documents, right? That's the that's what makes it fast, just right. So, okay, we'll try to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but anyway, I think with the interims, we can advance as well every two months. Yeah. So, and I think the the new as well the new chair has a lot of knowledge on Ripple, the potential new chair. So, as well, I think we can advance. With that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. If there is no further comment questions, uh, thank you very much for your participation, and I hope to see you in the next interim meeting. Thank you. Thank Talk you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.